Hello and welcome to my patchness rundown for the 12th of August. This week's update introduces some quality of life additions to mining and smithing including armor spikes as well as the ability to smith multiple items with a single input. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Attempting to deposit ores and stone spirits into an ore box with an insufficient mining level now provides more specific information on why the item couldn't be stored. Primal stone spirits have been added to various loot tables. I'm really happy to see this being a single type of stone spirit covering all Daemonheim ores rather than having 10 separate stone spirits for each unique type. I wish they would do this with the pre-existing stone spirits or at least group them into 2 or 3 separate types rather than having a ridiculous 17 different types of stone spirits. Even potentially having different quantities of stone spirits be used for different types of ore. The problem with having so many different types is that the supply and demand for a lot of these are extremely low, meaning that players will end up selling them for ludicrously low prices and buy them for exorbitant prices. The smithing interface now has a make x quantity slider to allow the creation of multiple projects of the same type without requiring to reopen the interface. This has insane potential as players will be able to AFK for up to 3 hours depending on what they're smithing and without considering the logout timer. All variants of armor spikes are now tradable with a grand exchange buy limit of 10,000. Armor spikes will now require the smithing level to create them in order to be used. The smithing level requirement to use the abyssal variant armor spikes has been set to the same level as the plain version. The Abyssal Flesh Grand Exchange buy limit has been increased from 500 to 5000. The activation chance of Abyssal Armor Spikes' secondary effect, Abyssal Parasite, has been increased from 25% to 100%. Soulfire Special Attack now has a chance for its cooldown to be reset if used in combination with Greater Chain. Now the special attack will reset if it procs on any of the chain targets, meaning that if the player chains two additional targets alongside the main target, it has a 65.7% chance of procking up from the standard 30% on a single target. By the time Greater Chain comes off cooldown, the bleed would have already finished so it perfectly lines up to not override any potential damage. This can lead into funny moments like this where the Soulfire special cooldown continuously resets. It is very important to note that this is being tested at dummies. This is not considering adrenaline management, fitting it into your rotation and the most difficult criteria to meet would be to have a constant set of extra targets to combo it with. It's also worth mentioning that Greater Chain is a pretty bad ability to use, but not as bad outside of Sunshine if the adrenaline generation from the Wanden Orb's passive stacking effect doesn't sustain the constant use of high damaging abilities. Giant Ent Familiar now affects the yield of Cactus Spines and Cactus Potatoes. And that's it for this week's patch notes. I would like to see them implement what they've done for Primal Stone Spirits to the rest of them. Could make them more valuable and sought after by adding additional effects that would generate more XP per hour. Anyways, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and take care.